Welcome to my Pac-Man tutorial. This tutorial assumes that you already are familiar with the concepts of game makers such as the sprites, sounds, objects, backgrounds and rooms and you know how to create them. This tutorial is mainly about focusing on the code and uh, how it all goes together. Uh, if you're still not sure about how to create sprites, sounds or all that sort of stuff, I recommend that you look at some of my earlier tutorials just to get a good idea of what's going on. So, as you can see, I've already made a start of creating scrolls and other sort of sprites. And um, I created four sprites for the Pac-Man. So there's one of them facing right, left, up and down. And uh, if you actually look at the sprite, you'll notice it's actually an animation. So these sprites are already available um, to download. So you can always pick those sprites so you can find your own. Um, I also put some sounds in. And I put a start and end background screen, and I've also put in the objects that I'll be requiring, including the other objects such as start and end level one. And I've already created one room, which is already laid out with the objects that we'll be using in this game. You see, the objects are there's a Pac-Man object, there are the monster objects, there are the little dots that Pac-Man will be eating, and when all the dots are gone, you go to the next room. And you have these little special um, objects that when Pac-Man eats them, these ghosts turn into scared monsters, or monster scared. Um, and that's why Pac-Man can actually eat them. There's also walls, of course. Um, so that's basically how the game works. So we'll be looking into all the code that goes into that. Anyway, so first of all, I'm going to do these... Uh, Create the basic of the Pac-Man on how he moves around the screen. So making sure that all your objects are solid for now. Um, just a couple of uh, keyboard commands. So first of all, if Pac-Man is moving to the left, if it's left, you want to move him leftwards at a speed that you're comfortable with, let's say six. And what I'm going to do also is I'm just going to change his sprites to face in the left direction. So to do that you do Pac-Man uh, left. So here we're facing left. Right? Um, now you can test that just to see if it works. As you can see it works. And he's disappeared at this point of time. Um, now what I found is that it's always ideal to um, okay. So what I found is that when you press the left, he actually doesn't animate; he just glides. So the way around that is actually when you do change sprite, set sub image to minus one. I'm not sure why that works, but it makes him animate. Um, you'll be able to see in a second. There you go, animated, and then runs away. So you repeat the so keyboard right, move to the right, speed of six, and I'm going to change his right, his right to man right. So you can choose minus one, make sure it animates. I'm going to go up, and the same idea again, up, speed of six. And I'm going to put this one up there. Animation. And lastly, keyboard down, move down, and put six. And this one down. This one. Okay. So you get the four commands there. Um, now I also want to do stuff where when I release the key, you actually stop moving. So, so if you go to keyboard release left, just have them stop moving. Um, go to keyboard release right, stop moving. Keyboard release up, stop moving. And keyboard release down, stop moving. So far, so good. Uh, 
clic à droite. Ok, so I am putting it right and moving it up. And he's basically walking through everything. That is a ghost. Anyway, so what we want to do is obviously make it when he collides into the walls that he doesn't move. So on collision with walls, not to stop moving. Now, something else I like to add to this, um, because as you can see, some of the corners are very tight, and if you don't stop exactly at the wall, if you're not aligned to the wall, you might find that when you try to get up or down from here, you get stuck in the wall. Um, to avoid getting stuck in corners, uh, the best way to do that is after you do stop moving, but uh, after you stop in moving in the direction, you want to do something called here, uh, align to grid. Okay, it's just under this jump menu, and you want it to align to the shape of uh, the size of the graph of uh, each of the raw objects, the walls, 32 by 32 pixels, right? So if I just start to get 32 by 32, what that means is here will align to this 32 by 32 grid, so that way you can move them up and down the track line, but having a tiny, tiny corner of him stuck by colliding against the wall and then preventing him from moving. Anyway, if that didn't make sense, let's trust me, just do it. Um, Okay, so the other thing you want him to do is, you know that he can leave the screen, he doesn't come back. And really design is very important in this. You want him, what you want him to do is when he leaves the room, you want him to wrap it around and come back from the other side. So if you're going to make holes in the walls that lead to the outside, you want him to come back. You want him to have a hole on the other side so he can get through it. Like right there, up and down. So what you do is you do add events. Outside room. You want to wrap, uh, wrap screen in both directions, horizontally and vertically. So let's give that a test. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so nice. Let's see if stuck. Sometimes you might find that you'll actually get aligned to the grid and you'll find a sudden jerk in your movements. Um, there's nothing you can really do about that. It's better than getting stuck in the middle of the game. So, you can see him and nothing's being eaten, and I'm still in the ghost. So. so, that's how you get to basically move. Now, what you want to do is when you eat the pill, the pill gets destroyed, and um, basically gets a point in that. So, at events, on collision with the dots, what you want to do is uh, destroy the dot, destroy other, okay? Because you're destroying the other, not the self. This is self, this is other. So, specifically, you want to destroy the dot itself. Uh, I do want to play a sound, which is going to be the sound of keep dot, not moving. And then I want to maybe add something to the score. If you want to have a score, that is. I mean, it's kind of funny since. It's just in pills in there, but let's just do one relative. Um, <coughs> I explained how relative works in previous games. Just do it, okay? <laughs> anyway, um, so what you also want to do is when collision is the special, you want to destroy that as well. Like that. And, um, you can have a score set to that, maybe I'll set the score 5, relative to the x5 to the score. And there's also a sound that I want to play, which is the sound of it's special. And there's other code I'm going to put there, which is going to basically turn these ghosts into um, scared monsters, but we'll get back to that in a second. Um, I'm going to add an event with what happens when you collide with the monster. So if it's a collision with the monster, what do you want to happen? Well, I want Pac Man to lose a life. So say I don't know. Um, minus one, relative. Um, I'm going to play a sound, which will basically say that uh, Pac Man was killed. And then I'm going to make Pac Man jump to the starting position. So Pac Man will jump back to the starting position. 
Because I don't want to restart the level. If I, could, I could restart the level, then all the girls will come back and everything starts the video play. More I just want to do is make him jump back to his original position. But also, I want all the monsters to jump back to the original position too. So, again, I'm going to do another jump to start. But this time, I'm going to do object monsters. So all monsters will jump back to the start positions. Alright. Um, lastly, if I go into my monster objects, um, basically, I want to do is when the monster is created, I want it to move in any of these four directions at a speed of six as well, <coughs> so that when the game is created, <coughs> they'll automatically move. Um, it's important too that you need to do a collision with the wall. <coughs> when you collide with the wall, so when the monster collides with the wall, you want the monsters to basically move in one of the four directions as well. Um, I'm just going to align them to the grid first. First, so 32 by 32. Um, just so that gets me stuck, and then I'm going to also move it again in those four directions. It doesn't actually follow Pac-Man. This one. This one's a very basic Pac-Man game. You could add some artificial intelligence later on, but we're just trying to do a simple Pac-Man game. And in this case, we're just going to make it so when they attack, well, the monster hits the wall, it's going to move randomly in one of the four directions. And also, lastly, um, because it may exit the room sometimes, you want to go outside room, you want it to wrap in four directions, just like Pac-Man does. So wrap around in all directions where it's outside the room. So let's save that and let's give that a test. Okay, so this next part of the game is about what happens when Pac-Man eats this uh, special. We want the monster to turn into a scared monster. And I'll show you how that's done. So, first of all, you do have normal monster which does these basic things and you want the scared monster to do roughly the same thing. The only difference between the monster and the scared monster is that Pac-Man can actually eat it instead of that very round. So what we'll do is we will pretty much do the same code. So you can see here on create when the scared monster is created you just gotta make a move in any of the four directions at a speed of six. When you make that's the monster collide with the wall. You want to basically make it align to 32 by 32, so the grid itself, and then move in any of those four directions at a speed of 6, just like a monster. And of course, when it's outside the room, other outside the room, you want to basically make it go around in four directions. Okay, so that's fine for now. Um, and then what we're going to do is, in the Pac-Man object, we're going to add an event where he, if Pac-Man collides with the monster scared, then monster scared is just going to um, jump back to the uh, starting position. Come on. And you could probably increase the score by maybe 10, relatively, if you want. That would be up to you. Now, it's a little confusing what's going on at the moment, but what I need to go and do is go back to the special collision. So when once Pac-Man collides in special, you notice that you destroy the, the special, add score, 5, and then play a special sound. But what I also want to do is change all the monster objects into the scared monster objects. Now to do so, if you go to main one, you will see something here called change instance. Um, terminology is, can be confusing. Instance is like another word for object. It's a bit more than that, but just for basic understanding, just assume that that's what they mean. So we want to put change instance, or if you want to call it object, whatever. And I want to change all objects of monster. I want to change it into the scared monster. That's what that does. And what I want to do is when 
collision the monster scared, I want to also change that monster scared other one. So I'm not going to change all of them, just the other one. If I did object monster scared, then that would mean all the objects of monster scared I want to change back to the normal monster, which is not what I want. I just want to change this one particular monster that I've collided with back into monster. That adds a bit of a challenge, you see, because even though all the scared monsters, there are scared monsters in the screen, since you eat one, you've added the monster back into the uh, game, so you still have to dodge something. Uh, and I think that's basically about it. Did I put a sound for that as well? I can't remember. I'm playing sound. Um, eat monster, there you go. So, what will happen is that scared monster jumps to the start position, adds 10 to the score, change itself back to a normal monster, and play the eat monster sound. Let's have a go and see that that actually works. So, did you notice that whenever I get hit by the normal monster, that only the normal monsters jump back to the screen and these scared monsters stay the same? What I want to do is whenever I actually die, that all the monsters, even the scared monsters, will go back to the start position and end up being normal monsters again. So, let's just go back to this code um, on the Pac-Man. And what I will do is, not only... As you can see, for all the monsters will jump to start position. I also want all the scared monsters, if there's any, to jump back to start position. And I want to have it so that I catch all the objects that are monster scared back into the monster. So that's how I get it so that if I am injured, if I'm eaten by a normal monster while there are scared monsters flying around the screen, that all of them will come back and turn back into normal monsters. I hope that makes sense. And what also what I want to do is um, I want to give an indication that after a few seconds the monsters actually will scared monsters will turn back into normal monsters. Um, I'll show you how to do that in a second. <laughs> 